gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Exceptional Conservative Show, live from nation's capital. I'm your host, the Exceptional One, Kim McClendon. Mary Brockman, my bouncer in chief, switches gracias to you. And she's in the chat role. If you diss her, you diss me, you will be whoop, dismissed from our program. Dave Miller, the unpleasant blind guy in there as well, and many others are tuning in around the world watching this along with the fact that you know I'm going to talk about what the president talked about because our anonymous intern is feeding me information. You're hearing the ding step-by-step. Uh, step. We'll talk about every single one of the things that the president spoke about. But we have a much more important conversation that needs to take place in America, and that is the moral responsibility of our uh, intelligence agencies to support this nation and not to politicize or by ideology attempt to overthrow or destroy uh, the presidency of the United States. Bradley C. Johnson is with us tonight. He is the president of Americans for Intelligence Reform. Uh, he is a tremendous man and a great get. I'm so glad for him to be on the air with us tonight. Uh, Mr. Johnson, if you could define for the American people who are tuning in tonight, because we have this James Bond mentality. What exactly is an intelligence officer? Well, there's a lots of different types, I guess I would say, and, and there's different disciplines within intelligence collections. So you would have, for example, everyone's heard of overhead photography, aircraft or satellites and things that take, photo that take photography of what there is on the surface of the earth and they're looking for all sorts of things and that's a, a talented person that's good at that and they can tell from all sorts of little things they see precisely what's going on on the on the ground also signals intelligence where you capture signals and you decipher it and so on so there's many different types of intelligence OSINT which is open source uh, where you gather in and it's and it's an in-depth analysis of bringing in all of the information and the combination of them all is where the analysts should be sitting normally and, and bringing in all types of information from every type of source and then combining it and having an all-source report, be able to put things out, having looked at everything going on in the world and, and be able to come up with good polished information to pass on to uh, policymakers. Leadership. Now, it's espionage, which is the branch I came out of. I was the CIA operations guy. So uh, espionage is, is what the, uh, I guess, what everyone thinks of when they think about you know, spying and, and intelligence collection. And uh, it, I would say that it's, it is one of those things for which there just simply is no replacement. There's never going to be a replacement for espionage. It's just, it, 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 it's one of those things that it actually drives the boat for a lot of other things. What you collect through human is what lets you spin that off into the other ints, if you will, the other forms of collecting intelligence. So uh, it's just it's just one of those things. It's a must have. And un unfortunately, essentially, that was disbanded under uh, former director John Brennan, uh, who was a uh, CIA director in the Clinton or uh, excuse me, the Obama administration. Yeah. And um, it was one of those things he went on an NPR uh, interview and bragged about the fact that we no longer steal information. Now he's tried to back off of it a little bit, but I'm telling you right now, he told the truth the first time. And it's one of those things that, that he just wiped out. And since then the CIA has publicized a lot of information like, uh, uh, you know, the, the reorganization, what they call the modernization and it induces that were good. I'm not suggesting it was all bad. Uh, yeah. Some of the techniques were improved upon in that, so that, type of thing but the human uh, now it's sort of the one size fits all anybody can go anywhere and do anything even an analyst an operations guy or all these other disciplines can sort of just like go wherever they want do whatever they want within they can all apply for these different types of jobs now the problem with that is that it takes a pipeline of experience and it takes uh, I, I, I go back to Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf, who was yes. the first uh, Iraq war. And he made a comment in an interview once that one of the reasons that we're so effective as a military, he was referring specifically to the army. And one of the reasons that we were so effective was because of our combat colonels. And he says it takes 20 years to create a combat colonel that's as effective as we have because of the experience and different types of things to go through. And precisely the same thing. 
in the CIA and operations. You need 20 years of experience learning along the way from people who are more experienced and trying different things in different environments and going through that 20 year process. So at the end of that process, you're a full performance chief of station would be essentially what I call, but someone who can lead and understands and manage intelligence espionage operations. And since that's been disbanded, you just no longer have that 20 year pipeline. And as the people from my generation, we're the kind of the last generation that had the full bore of all of this stuff. As we die off, those lessons die with us and those capabilities die with us. And already, I mean, by my standard, they're completely inept. And uh, it's just one of the not get better and it can't be, it can't be fixed or improved upon by, with the people that are there. And the leadership that's there are all uh, cadre from uh, John Brennan, the current director, Gina Haspel, and the three top lieutenants that she has around her were all placed in similar leadership positions by John Brennan, and she's just dusted them off and brought them back. So that's the leadership there. It's, it's a thing where they're, uh, they're just not capable. You know, they're just not, they don't understand the problem with what they're doing. And so they, if, it, if you don't really even understand what trouble, you're certainly not going to fix it. Is it that the onus of what it means to be a good espionage officer was replaced with the whole concept of being a political correct we all know what they mean by that they're saying are you liberal if you say no you know they don't hire you so everybody knows to say well yeah i i want to be a justice warrior and now the ones that are not liberals that still get hired basically today in this age if you're a conservative or a conservative christian and you're in the federal government you keep your mouth shut and your eyes down and that's a wow. fact that's the way it works and if you get found out, you're, you know, you're essentially ostracized. They make fun of you. And mm -hmm. that's the way it is. It's like in the school system. Why don't we see conservative professors in the university system or even in high schools and environment and they're not going to accept anyone else. And um, it's why you see them, you know, so able to be uh, like throw women under the bus or throw minorities under the bus. If they're not liberal, they don't count. They don't count as, you know, human, I guess. So, uh, they're to yeah. all of the other agencies, and it's the hiring now, practices, which is what you've talked about. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, I am so glad that you're with us tonight, because most Americans would believe that we are still with the Hubert Hoover-oriented intelligence officer, um, the, the, just a facts, ma'am, type guy or gal, and. Unfortunately, there are so many biases and prejudices that you have to jump over uh, little hurdles that you really can't focus on forewarning leaders in our country or servants in our country, public servants in our country, on the true threats in the world. I'm quite certain, in, in your opinion, the greatest threat in America is not Greta Thornburg being happy that the president is focused on uh, pollution and global warming. A am I right about that? A and why are well, intelligence <laughs> officers told that they have to focus on that mentality? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, our intelligence officers thinking that global warming is something for in the intelligence community to focus on. Uh, we have a technical term in the CIA they used in the old day, and we would have called that before as stupidity. And uh, <laughs> I think that's really the only the only explanation you need to to go go with. It's just it's stupidity. Uh, the the intelligence community is not built, and it's a waste of time and effort and what little talent is left to go after global warming. If global warming, if you believe that nonsense, which for which there's no evidence or proof of any kind. Uh, none whatsoever. There's not even a mathematical model that would explain how it could even happen. So there's no even theoretical model out there. But if you believe in that nonsense, fine. But it's still not an issue for the intelligence community. That would be a political issue that needs to be taken care of, not something that you run out and run intelligence operations on. So, I mean, just 
the intelligence community having one of the major quadrennial report talked about is a, is the perfect reflection of what's going on behind the scenes. All 17 agencies had to sign off on that, including the DNI at the time, which would have been James Clapper. And I, I just, I, I circle back to what I said before, the technical term for what them to conclude that that was the right thing to do is called stupidity. Now, there are those who are concerned in this election year, not because you have two old guys in the Democrat Party who need to be at the house, at the home uh, for political elders uh, going against a younger Donald Trump, but because there are those who are running around saying that Russia is influencing our elections and there are people in the intelligence community who are pushing that as well. Uh, is that true? It, did Russia convince Americans to vote for Donald Trump some seedy kind of way? No, of course, that's absolute nonsense. That's that's a, a complete fabrication and invention. And as we were talking about earlier, they're just, it's, it's, they're grasping at straws, trying to find a way to criticize the president of the United States and nothing more. That it's a, it's a, it, it's unfortunately they've, they've just gone so astray and don't care about reporting the truth anymore that that's the type of thing they've fallen into is, is, is any excuse. Now, let me say, uh, anyone, if you just sit and kind of analyze and understand the situation a little bit, you know that Russia would not go into a intelligence program trying to steal or manipulate or try to uh, change election results because this is all county by county and there's hundreds of counties in each you know in, in a lot of these states and uh, you just it'd be just too overwhelming for them to do and it's hard to change the outcome of the election it'd be extraordinarily difficult and there's no reason to do that the Russians and the Chinese and the Turks, their country that's the feelings of hostility towards the United States, but has relationships with the United States, has a perfectly legal means to go try and affect elections in the United States, and that's called lobbying. They all do it. Russians spend millions of dollars a month. The Chinese spend millions of dollars a month. The Turks spill, uh, spend millions of dollars a month on lobbying and what are they trying to do they're trying to influence our political system and elections and outcome on policy all of this stuff and they do it legally so on earth would they go do any of this other stuff that's risky and all that i mean it just uh, you know fault you can categorize that in your file counted under crap it's just nonsense it's just, <laughs> it's just not realistic we love your honesty uh, Bradley Johnson, uh, one other question here, FISA being reauthorized, uh, everyone's saying on Capitol Hill that the changes that have been made, that have been approved by the Attorney General Barr, are good enough for FISA to go through. Yet, on the down low, many people don't want to vote for a reauthorization of FISA because of what happened with Carter. Um, so tell me, is FISA okay the way it is, or should it be changed? Should it be thrown out? What should happen with FISA? Carter Page, forgive me. Well, this is something I've actually, yes, Carter's the guy targeted. Uh, look, the, the FISA laws as they were originally written and uh, ha have been used over the last you know, couple decades were okay. There's really there's not that much wrong with the FISA laws the way they were written. Now that can they be improved upon? Yes. And would I trust U.S. You know the former these these guys that were all involved in this FISA thing all believed that their political uh, perspective, their personal political beliefs, were more important than the law, than the Constitution, mm -hmm. than the United States of America. They thought their judgment was superior to all the laws in the Constitution. And so they justified these clearly illegal acts. And I'm telling you now, when the investigation is done with Durham and Barr, U.S. Attorney uh, Durham, who's do heading the investigation into FISA and all this, when all that's said and done and that final report is out there and made most of it will be made public, these guys, some of them are going to jail. They're certainly going to be indicted. I'll put it that way. Now, yeah, 
that's the problem. It's the political corruption. Now, uh, I, there's a couple of things that we could do uh, to, to change that. Yes. Uh, but the, a number of things. First of all, part of the problem after World War II, a lot of time was taken to decide what to do with intelligence operations. And the CIA was created as a separate organization so that not so much power was concentrated in the hands of too few. And that was done purposefully. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, the CIA was never even a cabinet position. The director of the CIA was just reported to the president, was completely separate, so that he had nothing to do with policy. So he wasn't wed to any sort of policy because the fear would be then it starts to impact your analysis. Now, our analysis has gone political for a very long time. Yeah. And the director of the CIA has been a cabinet position since one of our great presidents was Ronald Reagan. But one of the one of my criticisms of him was he made the 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 director of the CIA a cabinet position, which that's a mistake because then they're part of policymaking. And that's a mistake for for intelligence. It should be completely separate, a different thing. So, I mean, this concentration of power, what we've seen when you have leadership at the FBI and also the head of their counterintelligence, which is the intelligence arm of the FBI, which grew and overlap and has mission creep and all of these things that have taken place over the decades. In combination, politically corrupt DOJ, Department of Justice, is what we had that allowed this FISA thing to be abused. Those are the problems. Now, should we separate out the counterintelligence? And the FBI is basically director, deputy director, a very large criminal division and a somewhat smaller counterintelligence CI division. Yeah. That was where, of course, the famous Peter Strzok was the head of that and yep. involved in all of this. So uh, I, I think a serious thought needs to be given to does that need to be broken off, broken off from the FBI? And I think it should be given serious consideration because that is part of the reason for this corruption. Mm -hmm. It's part of how it, it, it grew to be because of the so much power in the hands of so few. And uh, this mission creep is part of the problem. I mean, now 17 intelligence agencies, you know, okay. You know, I, I can see where five or six of these guys make sense. And some of them, I mean, State Department is part of the intelligence community, but they're kind of their own little thing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the DNI and DHS and all of these things that were created after 9-11, I mean, a lot of this was, you know, bureaucrats from the 9-11 Commission, what do, they, what do they recommend? What do bureaucrats create? Bureaucrats create more bureaucracy, and that's what we got. I often criticize that. I mean, if you look at who was on that, it was politicians and lawyers and uh, academics, those sorts of people. And you know, not a single one of them, not one was a career professional operations guy of any kind, not law enforcement operations, not military operations, not intelligence operations, zip zero. And if you had taken a commission and put, you know, 12 or 15 of guys like me, you know, old operations exactly. hands that have actually done this stuff and law enforcement guys who've done this stuff, military guys that have been out and worked against these targets. If you had put together a commission of guys like us, we would have come up with something that had nothing to do with creating bureaucracy. And what we would have come up with is stuff that would have actually worked because we've done it. So we know what works and doesn't work. Those guys have no clue, and that's exactly. why we got a DNI and DHS and all this stuff. We got more bureaucracy. Yeah, I mean, did that help immigration? I'm telling you right now, it didn't. Did it no. help airport security? I'm telling you right now, it didn't. You know, not that those aren't good people and that they're hardworking, and most of them are, are just people that want to do the right thing most of the time. But it, it, it just creating more bureaucracy just doesn't help the problem. So, I mean, there's a long list. We would need an hour to start to go into all the things well, that would have to be done to fix it. But, you know, another time, bring, maybe. I will be bringing you back next month so that we could talk about that, uh, the things that okay. need to be done, uh, especially going into a budget year. Because personally, I believe in terms of appropriating the uh, synchronicity of these agencies, uh, making them smaller turning 17 into possibly five, maybe six at the very most. You don't need all of these intelligence agencies whipshawing around the world, uh, imposing political favor uh, with certain persons and going against others and spying upon political campaigns. 
how can people read your stuff and get to know what you do at Americans for Intelligence Reform? Well, please uh, follow me on Facebook, and that's at uh, uh, Americans for Intelligence Reform. Uh, I'm on Facebook at, under Brad Johnson, and my website is intelreform.org. So any or all of those, please go take a look, follow. I do uh, a very a private newsletter to people following on my website, and uh, uh, those are all good sources for the for these interviews and information that we put out. Awesome. You will be back. I love talking with you. Your common sense, and that's what we need in the intelligence community. Ladies and gentlemen, Bradley Johnson, former CIA officer. He is fighting the good fight for all of us in America. Uh, you can get this video uh, for your own review. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, it will be on the TECN TV, as well as the Exceptional Conservative Network television YouTube channel. We will be back with more of the best, ladies and gentlemen, right after this. You are watching none other than the Exceptional Conservative Show on TECN-TV, the best in urban conservative news and talk. Hi, guys. So I am back with another haul. You guys.